we got some we got some hot topics I want to I want to touch on this week. You, you up for it? Well, oh, you had the California uh, upholding the, the gig the, uh, Prop Twenty Two, which is a, a victory for the you know the the third party providers mainly right now. Yeah, so just just so everyone knows, that was what on Thursday, right? This week, so the yeah. California um, Supreme Court upheld a law allowing companies like Uber, DoorDash, and Lyft to treat their delivery workers as independent contractors instead of yeah. uh, as employees. Right. So the judicial process is upheld. You know, something that was uh, voted on via referendum, but you know that's not to say, Mark, that we couldn't have further legislation being introduced in California, which is one of the more progressive states like, you know, on the East Coast, Massachusetts, to continue to, you know, challenge or to uh, refine um, those structures. We, we've seen it at a more local level in, you know, Seattle. We've seen it at the state level as well in Minnesota. So what's clear is this isn't, uh, you know, the, the, a victory in terms of the, the war. It's just victory for this one battle. I mean, this is going to continue. Oh. And I would add that, you know, if you are counting on companies to support a position uh, that benefits third party providers, I'm not sure you can count on Walmart simply because, you know, they have less need or reliance on that model um, as a result of their focus in building out their first party distribution services that we're seeing today. So it was also reported this week that uh, Albertson's base of loyalty members increased 15% year over year during the quarter. Any well, surprise there? That's a big number. So mm -hmm. you have to ask what, what changed? I mean, what drove that, that number? Did they talk about the catalyst? You know, what would what ignited that that Just type said, of growth year over year? Albertsons announced it had streamlined its loyalty program to simplify how members accumulate and redeem points. So I oh, guess I, I didn't get removing that note friction. Yet. Uh yeah. I haven't gotten that one yet. I still enter a mobile phone number at the pharmacy or at the checkout. Um, I don't get anything for it, I don't think. I sometimes use the app, but I'm not sure they're even connected between that and my phone number. So uh, it's not being critical. Again, the technology is only going to be as good as the user, but this user right now didn't see anything noticeably different. I mean, I know they have the Fresh Pass. Um, I'm not sure what benefits there are in there. I think, um, you know, fairly standard. So again, I'm just wondering what really has changed. Yeah in their value prop and i'm a customer well, well know, i think and I, I don't know the answer to that perhaps promoting the loyalty program more but also making it easier to sign up yeah well um yeah so if they've had the signups that's great now we'll see how that you know translates into spend you you, you would assume it, it should have some positive correlation to it yeah. but again you're also assuming these are customers that you know have a positive association with you or relationship but I, but I also think we've all seen the shift in emphasis yeah. from uh, transaction to retention and repeat business, and a lot of a lot of regionals, a lot of uh, grocers are focused uh, on you know augmenting the, their, pro, their their loyalty programs as a result. You know, it, it also may be, and I'd have to look. I, I have over on one of my other desks the the weekly circulars. I, I keep amassing them, and I like looking at them mm -hmm. once in a while. Um, I know that Kroger with the Mariano's banner really leads on their member pricing for their price promotion in their weekly ad. So that really enforces the value of being a member, right, of yep. the program. I can't recall whether um, Albertsons or the, in my case, the Jewel banner uh, does the same thing or has made any significant changes, you know, along those lines. But that could be one other factor if we knew whether that was happening or not. Yeah. Awesome. Anything else you wanted to, to bring up, David? Because I think oh, we're at the end of our time. What, what, what else is there, Mark? I don't really. What else happened this week? What's, uh, president dropped out of a race. Uh, where, where, we got two astronauts stuck in space. Yeah. Okay, Amy, I think we've, we we can call it a show here, but I'll, I, got, I got some questions for, for David. 
and okay. um, this is this is not specific to any research that you've published, but we no. want to we, we want we want to ask the brain, you know, what his opinions. And I, oh, I, I okay. and I know you're you're reluctant to actually share opinions. You just want to let the data speak for itself. But I'm going to ask you to sure. Um, yeah, and, and, and if you don't mind, I may um, play the role of a customer because I am oftentimes the, the shopper for our house or for much of this research. I, I would characterize as shared, right? Um, shared. And, and okay. I think there is a growing trend there. And by shared, you know, that would imply it's 50-50. I, I think she does more is than it? I do. Is it, no, is, it's is not. It split? Okay. No. But, you know, I mean, I, I work out of the house, she works from home, she's retired. So I may grab something on the way home. Unlike her, I actually enjoy shopping in stores. So yeah. I'll go do things. And you know, sometimes if she's not feeling well, I mean, she's the reason why we do online uh, shopping for delivery. And uh, you know, she is a, a, a big Amazon customer as well, um, because again, you know, it's really easy to just buy something and then get it delivered to your doorstep. There's very little. So, so that's so, but, that, so you know. that's that that's the key determinant of Amazon is that is how easy it is. I guess just yeah. to open up the app and just stop start shopping for uh, household groceries. Uh, well, no, it, it's almost mindless for her. Like she's she's. Yeah. Watching her Animal Adventure Park live cam on her iPad, she's got the the TV on. Is there, uh, is there any on a twenty four or... hour news channel? But again, you know, when we go online, you know, she has you know a physical issue. You know, she would prefer to go to the store because you know she she understands she has the time, but sometimes her body just says no, nope, and yeah. she just opens the app, you know, builds her basket. She's pretty proficient at that, knows what she wants, and then you know pushes checkout right and but, that's good but but it's habitual like does she have is no, it only it's amazon not. it's not oh okay. oh well for amazon uh i i well i was just looking at the credit cards yeah that's pretty much it's all on the credit cards but you you said in the past you like you like to, to to buy from heinen's uh jewel osco i, I think is another uh, banner in your uh, neck of the woods Jewel's the closest store to us. It's probably a half a mile. That would be yeah. our primary store. We have you know, more than half of our spending there. Um, but, you know, over the years, uh, going back, I remember doing an analysis. They used to get more than three quarters of our business. And today they're now under 50 percent. Heinen's is our preferred retailer. Um, they don't get the, the full basket. But anytime we want the you know the perimeter especially you know prepared foods you know we're going to Heinen's uh, which is a little farther for us and it used to be we were a Target not a Walmart household but we're no longer even a Target household but we do go to Walmart for very specific reasons so so what have been the determinants in in uh, selecting your preferred uh, e-grocery e store see you know that's that's kind of the the rub up until recently, you know, our preferred uh, retailer really wasn't, uh, um, you know, available to my wife for whatever reason. Uh, what she often does is, you know, goes to either Jewel or Heinen's. But mm -hmm. depending on what she's looking for really determines which one she goes to. And this goes to some of the research that, you know, we did with Mercatus a year or two ago yeah. that also kind of got to the selection criteria that customers like us would use for determining where they shop. And, you know, for conventional or regional grocers, proximity to where someone is, is reigning king. I mean, that's what is the primary reason. It's the closest to my home. It is conveniently located. You know, the sec is really a uh, quality products uh, in the mm -hmm. perimeter, right? Uh, and that's what draws us to Heinz. Um, prices, uh, uh, low prices come, you know, tertiary, if not even further down for us, because where the pricing becomes more uh, relevant is just, you know, what savings can I get, you know, during that trip? You know, what deals are there? What discounts can I get? You know, how can they help me save money within that context? Um, but I'm not drawn there specifically because of their everyday pricing. So you wouldn't, yeah, so you wouldn't classify yourself as a deal conscious household 
yeah, overall, we probably wouldn't be classified that way. I could yeah. be individually. My wife definitely would not be. Yeah. So, so where, so where in the in the mix, based on you know, let's let's talk about market share, for example. Where would you classify yourself, your household? In in terms of what? How how am I classifying myself? <laughs> As a what? <laughs> Yeah, based on uh, are you are you I, I would say upper oh, middle a income deal, a deal seeker or yeah, deal what? seeker or more you know, speed versus convenience in terms of what, what is what is your primary motivation? It's an aspect of convenience and quality, right? Okay. In in that regards, but there are times where we'll trade off convenience for price, right? Uh, but quality still stays there, and that's where Aldi comes in. Uh, you know, Aldi actually makes up a, you know, a fairly sizable share for our household now versus, let's say, 10 years ago where it was zero. Um, and we've been shopping with them through the evolution of them bringing in and accepting credit cards to the uh -huh. refreshes to the introduction of the online. So, you know, we've seen, you know, that move up market. We like that product range. We're willing to drive farther for uh those products one because we like them and two it's a great price right and it's the same reason why we may drive you know five miles versus a half mile to walmart you know w one primary reason my ginger beer you know isn't available sometimes at jewel or, or heinen's and and when it is uh it's usually you know three or four bucks more a six pack first of <laughs> all know? i i, I I, yeah. I didn't. I so, didn't know the ginger beer was such a hot, uh, hot product. A diet ginger beer of a particular brand in the conventional grocers could be nine ninety nine a six pack. That's crazy. It's like Olipop or something. Um, but I love it. So when I found it at Walmart for like three dollars less, you know, I same went brand? there and I. Same brand, yeah, same brand oh. for you know three bucks less a six pack. You know, I'm going there to clear the shelf. So. You know, that may be a case, case and a half, right? If I stock up like there's going to be a, a storm tomorrow or something. But, but you know, the funny thing is I've had good and bad experiences with Walmart because of this. You know, uh, you know, I, one of the things that, you know, Walmart has really done well is built a, a you know, an omni-channel app, right, that really creates a lot of uh, benefit for them, um, both in store and online. We see that with the, the penetration that they have. But in this case, I was using it to uh, check in store availability. So, uh, and the reason I did that was I made the mistake one time hang, going hang, hang there. On. Okay, so let me. <clears throat> so you open the app, you yeah. selected the store, yeah. You built you built the cart in the mobile app. I just have to go to the item and. Walmart's uh, functionality now will flag low inventory items or items out of stock. At the store, at, at the individual store? At the store level. Got it. So they have inventory visibility at, at that level within the, the, the mobile app. Okay? So I just simply go into the app as if I'm going to do pickup, right? Yeah. And I now know, I've been conditioned, that if the item is out of stock, it will show as unavailable. Uh, if it's low, it should be low stock. So I would be sitting yeah. here with the intent of not making an order online, but simply using the online tool to look at in inventory in the store. I said we, we've seen we've seen that same behavior in some of our clients where um, customers will use the the actual cart building function because it's not in the shopping list but in the in, in the cart you're able to calculate uh, the item discounts so and you can see them taking product in and out of basket just because I'm you know the assumption is that well, they have a budget yeah, that they're yeah. that they're working against so another feature that sometimes goes that way and target built it into their mobile app for specifically in-store use but sometimes people will build the cart because it will list the aisles mm -hmm. and depending on you know any type of sort feature you have potentially in your platform you could then sort that 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 cart by aisle 
without going into the list features, although you could use the least list features, but just remember, I, I, uh, technology is only as good as the user, and I'm not sure I would use the list feature either. I, I don't, but, but in this case, I'm using it to check inventory. Target used to do something similar before yeah. they took the toggle switch away, which was show out of stock items or not. And I think, again, what that was a good learning about was saying, hey, if you're out of stock, is it better not to show the product at all in the search or to show the product, but indicate and flag it somehow that it's so, out of stock? So why do you think Target took that out or did away with it? I just think it was a feature that, you know, when you looked at it, taking that out could send the wrong message. Because for instance, if I toggled it to only show items in stock and I look for my favorite ginger beer, Let's say it was out of stock that one time yeah. at Target. I mean, I'm not even saying they carry it, but if it, they did, I would say, oh, shoot, they don't carry it. I'm not going to consider them in the future. However, if instead of me toggling off, don't show out of stocks, yeah. it showed up regardless, but simply was either you know shaded lighter or had a stamp or some flag on it indicating out of stock, then at least it would remind me that they offer it, it's just not available, yeah. right? So yeah. in the case well, of Walmart, I, I, I do appreciate from the customer standpoint, them flagging low inventory or no stock items. Um, obviously the issue and the reality is, um, and I understand this, is you know those things are pretty dynamic. There could be one item on the shelf and it's called low, and then in 30 seconds, there could be zero. Yeah, um, but yeah. at the same time, my wife uh, went back to the store where we didn't have it, you know, two hours later, and the store was restocked, right? So would it have been nice that the store alerted us somehow that it was there? Yeah, sure, maybe. Well, that, uh, how would that work? I don't know. But you know, the point is to stay, you know, in mind in or within that consideration set, right? Because the minute someone thinks, rightly or wrongly, that an item is no longer available at then they're going to be less inclined to search for that item there, which means it's not going to go in the yeah. basket as much. I, I, I think um, not necessarily from a, 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 you know, a grocery example, but there's a Canadian retailer, um, you know, Canadian Tire, and they have what's, uh, what's called a rain check um, toggle on their, on their mobile app. So if it's out of stock, you can still indicate that you want that product, but you know, also be notified when it does uh, become back in stock. So uh, have you seen anything like that in, in, in at either Walmart or Target? No, you know, you know what I do see is when, um, you know, where I have seen that though, Mark, is Home Depot. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Because I remember I was- General I was, Merchant, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I was searching some stuff and then I keep getting these emails like, hey, such and such is, you know, um, you know, on deal this week. And it would have been something I searched for, let's say a week or two ago, right? Yeah, yeah. So they're pretty uh, persistent with that. I'm not recalling any retailer doing that other than the, you know, the, the, the standard card abandonment email, like, hey, did you yeah. forget to push checkout or something? That, that's fairly consistent as opposed to the individual items. Yeah, I, I, you know, I've seen it there, and I've seen it in some Shopify apparel um, provide you know, stores, online stores, where they notify you that you know, hey, the product's back in stock. Do you want it, Do you want to add it to your cart? I don't know. Maybe maybe we just gave Walmart an idea to add, to add to their mobile app. Well, my wife tried to do like the ship to home from Walmart. I'm like, yeah. don't don't you know? And she's like, oh wait a second, I got to have like, you know, nearly fifty dollars in here to get free shipping or something uh, she was doing. And I'm like, no, it's not worth that. Um, I'll just go to the store and I could use the pickup. If I did the pickup, then they would likely miss out on additional kind of basket toppers. Cause when I go in there now, specifically for my ginger beer, I'm getting, you know, my various juices, some apple cider vinegar, maybe I'm getting Gatorade for the wife. You know, I'm stocking up on those things, right? Um, so now they've kind of pecked off a few of the other things that I get that I no longer need to buy elsewhere. So that's the, 
insidious nature of, of that trip that I'm now taking to Walmart specifically for, you know, an item that only has one facing and maybe a case and a half pack out on the shelf. So it's not a huge item, but that's what draws me to Walmart. All right, I will be back with you shortly, probably okay. in the next few days, to do, uh, talk about what, David? What are we gonna be talking about? In the next few days, that would be the monthly results for the month of July. <laughs> okay, what about the other that, one? Oh, the, oh, the, the market oh, share. Yeah. Oh, that's right, yeah, the, the quarterly market share report. Yeah, there's some good stuff in there. Okay, well. Yeah, really good stuff. The, way, to, way to sell it. All right. Is there anything you want to tease? Well, I think, you know, there, I think your reaction kind of summed it up, Mark, when I told you how, how much share, you know, Walmart grabbed, you're like, everyone knows that. So I so think, what? What I, yeah. <laughs> so what I found fun was really digging into understanding and trying to explain the why um, based on what we know Walmart has been doing. And that's been really um, very enlightening for at least me. Um, and I think as we start to share that with the retailers, they can hopefully then take away some learnings from you know what may be helping Walmart win more share today, but would help them understand, okay, well then how do I compete against that, right? So to develop some more actionable insights, but there we that's, go. that's more it's communicated coming. in the, the one-on-ones, as you know. Okay, stay tuned. It's great All having right. you. Thanks for, thanks for pinch hitting, uh, David. Oh, you're very welcome, Mark. I'm very happy and honored to do it. All right. Bye, folks.